he lives. Because of what he's done in my life and what I've seen him do in others' lives, he is a merciful God. Long suffering. And he loves us. He loves us despite ourselves. Oh, man. Can you imagine? <laughs> no, we, we, we all guilty. We all guilty before God. We all guilty. If it wasn't for the blood of Jesus Christ, we'd all perish. And it's just a, such a, such a blessing to know. It's such a blessing to be part of His kingdom, be part of what He's done. The picture's so much bigger than what we see. We're a part of something. And it ain't of this world. We're a part of something. The kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God. Thank God for that. The cross is symbolic. It's our faith and belief. But it's the blood on the cross. That's right. The is not the cross. That's right. It's the blood the world doesn't want to hear. That's why the Bible says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish right. foolishness. But to, to us... But unto us is the power of God. It is the power of God. You know what? That fires me up. We're gonna get up. We're gonna go. We're gonna. We're gonna. We're gonna have church today. You see all these people running around, especially these movie stars and these singers and all that living idolatrous lifestyles, living lifestyles of sin, walking around with a, the image of the cross wrapped around their neck. They don't represent the church of Christ. But that cross, that cross, that cross represents Jesus Christ and the suffering. That He died for that same sinner. I struggle with that when I see these people do that. I struggle with that. I said, you wearing that cross and Jesus died for you. But we live like hell. And there'll be a millstone around their neck and they don't realize it. Mm. Boy, I tell you, He is... Uh, he is really manifesting himself. Amen. In these last days. You know, in these last days, we've been here for a long time. But we're getting to see so many things. All these things that ought to be building our faith. And we ought to be growing stronger each and every day in the love of Christ. And, and being more vigilant and sharing His Word with other people. And walking like a true child of God. Like a true child of God. So I was telling Brother Kent a while ago, I said, I don't know how this message is going to go. I said, it's been on my heart. Lord's had it on my heart all week, and I just ain't been able to put it into words. But, you know, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, says, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the salt of the earth, and if the salt hath lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? We're supposed to be salt in the earth. We're supposed to be salt in the earth. You know, I was saying, that's what I was telling Brother Kenna. We stopped at a little Mexican restaurant the other day to eat. And then we sat outside and I grabbed a salt shaker. And you know, it's full of salt. But there's no salt coming out. Because it done get crystallized. It all done got hard. And it wasn't no good. You couldn't get it out. I had to sit there and beat it on the table. Tap it on the lid. Wake it up. Stick your knife down in there and shake it up to get it where it would break loose and come out of the, the shaker. And I sat down this morning and the Lord showed me a picture and said, that's the church. We're the salt of the earth, but we're stuck. We sit there and sat for so long letting everybody else do the work. We've gotten hard. 
We've gotten hard towards society. We've gotten hard towards each other. We've gotten hard because of sin. And when it's time to salt the earth, we get stuck in the holes and we can't get out. We're the salt of the earth. You see, when salt's lost its ability to enhance the flavor of something, it's lost its effectiveness. You look at the world around us today, I would say that the salt is still hung in the shaker. Because you don't see the effects of the gospel working in people's lives anymore. You see the effects of the world. And that's our job to be spreading that salt. To be spreading that salt. Boy, I'm, I'm gonna get ahead, I want to get ahead of myself real bad right now, but I'm going to hold off. <laughs> we got to be that salt. Because if it's a loss is effectiveness, Christ said it's cast out and trodden under the foot of man. And you look at society today and look at the church versus the world. Look at the church versus the world. The church is getting trodden under the foot of man. It won't be trodden down. Because Christ said the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. But it's time to stir it up. It's time to get that salt in motion. It's time for the effectiveness of the salt to jump forth and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and to put, burn, put salt in the wounds of a wounded world. And so it burns, because salt burns when it gets in a wound. When it gets in a wound. Salt does a lot of things. Salt does a lot of things. <laughs> You know, the only way for pure salt to lose its flavor is to be mixed with other chemicals. Do you know that? The only way for pure salt to lose its flavor is to be mixed with other chemicals. It breaks it down. Amen. And it loses its flavor. And that's the problem we've got in the church today. The church is trying to break down the Word of God so that it's not effective in the lives of people. We'll break it down and twist it up so that we can apply it to ourselves to make us feel good. Well, therefore, it's not, doing, it's not being effective in our lives. It's not burning. It's not causing us to thirst. Because salt, what salt do? It makes you thirst. It makes you thirsty. That's why when you put a salt block out for your horses or your cows, you got to make sure they got plenty of water because they'll sit there and they'll eat that salt and eat that salt and then they're going to drink because they're thirsty and that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be the salt. And if we keep on salting the earth, salting those people around us, sooner or later, sooner or later, whether they reject you or not, you keep on with grace Season with salt. Let your speech be with grace. Season with salt, Colossians tells. If you keep on, sooner or later they're going to want to come to the well and they're going to want to drink. But see, we quit salt in the earth because this right here is the salt. This is the salt. The truth. The truth. It burns. It convicts. There's no Queen James in the Bible. But yet the world want to read, wants to read out of the Queen James Bible because the salt has been diluted. Substituted. It's been substituted. Amen. It ain't been diluted. It's been substituted. They want to read out of whatever makes them feel comfortable in their lifestyle. They want to twist the Word of God to make it fit their needs and their means. That's where we come in. That's where the true church, the true body of Christ, that's where we come in. 
We don't hang out in the shaker. We've got to get out. We've got to get out in society no matter how, how bad it tends to beat us down or how bad it seems to make us feel. We don't want to be around that. and We're not to be partakers with them. We're not to be a part of them. We're in the world. We're not of the world. But we are the light of the world. We are supposed to be the light of the world. And if our light be hid, what are they going to do? If the salt has lost its flavor, savor and is cast out and trodden under the foot of man, it's useless. The dogs lick it up, just like the horses and the cows. They get out there and they'll lick the ground to get the minerals out of the ground. That's what's going to happen. But see, we've got a job to do. Our job is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. No matter how much it conflicts with your day-to-day -day walk and the things that you want to do, the Bible says be ready always to give an answer to any man that asketh the reason of the hope that lies within you. Be ready always with a smile. With a smile. How many people you want to approach is just sitting there with their head down all mulled up and angry looking all the time? We ain't got nothing to be angry about. We have nothing to be angry about. For one, we're going to spend an eternity in heaven. Amen. For two, this life is temporary. For three, we've got a God that loves us. And He sent His Son to die for us. And that through Him, we have the hope that we have, the promise of everlasting life. Like the songs, then one day I cross that river, I say, the, then I'll know He lives. We know. We know right now that He lives. If you don't know that He lives and He's not living in your heart and in your life and manifesting Himself through you, you need to hit your knees and ask God to show me. Amen. Show me, Lord, that you live. Because I want Him to live in my life. I'm a wretched sinner. There ain't nothing, nothing about me that would want to make Almighty God Himself come down and, and take me into His kingdom. But the blood of Jesus Christ. But the blood of Jesus Christ. But see, people want to live in the now, but it's not the now that we're living for. We should be living for Christ and that which is to come. Working our way to the top. So I think I might have said it one time before. I said, you know, when Jacob laid down on the stone, he saw the ladder descend down from heaven. If God said it was going to be easy, he had to send an elevator. That's right. It's a job. We got to work. 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 Christ said, if any man putteth his hand to the plow and looketh back, he is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Beloved, we better be plowing, plowing all day long. Plowing all day. And when that bud brings forth and it brings forth fruit, and they might need a little salt to go on that fruit. Right. And that might be where you come in. To salt that. So that God can receive glory. See, the church has been complacent in its routine. We become hardened against society. It's not that we don't want to be the salt. It's just the fact that so many of us don't want to be the salt of the earth. We don't mind being the salt in our little bottle with the rest of the salt. You hear me? We don't mind being the salt in the shaker because we're surrounded by salt. The problem we have is being the salt of the earth. The problem we have is from the time we get out 
of the shaker. Because we're in the shaker right now. It's when we leave the church. It's when we leave the fellowship that we have with each other. It's when we leave the comfort of the body and go out into the world and start sprinkling salt. And then we get resistance. Oh, that's when we put it up. That's where we put the salt back. Oh, they don't like salt. Well, I'm not going to give them any salt. Give them salt! Give them the Word of God! It's the truth! It's the truth! Hold their noses, pour it down their mouth so they'll be dying for thirst and they'll want to come to the well and drink. That's what we're supposed to do. We ain't got to choke them out with it. But we've got to season it a little at a time. Through our lifestyle, through our conversation, through our walk through this life, people see you. People see you and know that you're a child of God if you're doing the will of God. We just want to sit on the shelf. That's what I wrote here. You see, people have heard about Jesus. People have heard about the grace of God, but so many have never experienced the grace of God. All these people you hear mocking Jesus. They try to mock our God. They try to mock the church and they try to mock you for standing up for the truth. Standing up what's for right because they're all educated. They're all educated. They've all got science so-called working in their favor, so to speak. They've got an explanation for everything. But you know what? It's so simple to tell somebody that Jesus Christ is the only way you'll ever see everlasting life. And if you reject Him today, you're going to bow before Him one day. And you're going to confess one day that He is the Son of God. That Jesus Christ is Lord. You're going to confess. Whether you believe me now, or whether you believe Him when you stand in front of Him. That's how salt works. That's how salt it preserves. But if they go off and shake the salt off, so be it. So be it. It's our job to tell them the truth. It's our job to keep salt until they experience the grace of God. The whole world, the Word has went out into all the world. It's went out into all the world. It's one thing to say that I know God. It's one thing to say I've heard of grace. But it's another thing to experience God's grace. And if you're not out in the world being a witness to people and letting people see God's grace and Jesus Christ and how He works through you, not let seeing your light shine, they may never experience it. Because God is merciful. That's why we're here. He's long-suffering. We're supposed to be the light of the world. The salt of the earth. You know when you turn on the light in the kitchen, you can't find the salt till you turn on the light, can you? That's right. You know, and that's it. Some people haven't experienced that because their hearts are hard, and some people haven't experienced because of the hardness of our hearts towards people. And that's a hard one for me. That's a hard one for me. Because people make their own decisions. And I'm not very sympathetic with people that make stupid decisions. But it's hard to be the salt. That's where that sympathetic comes in. That's where that, that grace seasoned with salt comes in. I'm still working on that. That's right. Me too. I'm still working on that. Because we are our biggest problem. We are our biggest problem. But see, it's how we approach people. If people have problems and they come to you, I don't know what to do. Well, let me tell you what Jesus done. Let me tell you what Jesus done. I had sister-in-law told me that last night. I was telling a story. I'd gotten mad, you know. People 
taking advantage of you and everything. And too bad Millie ain't here because she was witness to it. <laughs> Bless her heart. I had to apologize to her. But like she said, you know, Jesus Christ Himself, when He went into the temple and the money changers were there, you know, He... What did he do? He turned over the tables. He cleansed the temple. He sent them all out. Called it a den of thieves. You have turned the house into a den of thieves. The house of prayer. You know, sometimes we have to get a little excited to get some attention, to get things done. And that's what we have to do. But we have to season it with grace. Season it with salt. Let it be with grace. Colossians 4, 5, and 6. Chapter 4, verses 5 and 6 says, Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. You hear me? Walk in wisdom towards them that are without. All these out here doing everything in the world today but spending time with God. All those that haven't come to the knowledge of the truth. Those without. We're in the body of Christ. We're not of this world. We're to go walk in wisdom towards those that are without. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Verse 6 says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how ye ought to answer every man. Every man. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt. You know, that, boy, that can go a long way. The Bible says, provoke not your children to wrath. We get angry, we lose that grace, don't we? We see people living abominable lifestyles. We throw grace out the door and pride jumps out in front. Because we know what's best for everybody, right? That's what we do. We know what's best. We know what they're doing wrong. I mean, that's, you know, that's just the way that we are. We throw grace out the window. And then we cry for it when we do wrong. Let your speech be with grace always. Seasoned with salt. If your speech is seasoned with salt and your walk, if you walk in wisdom toward them that are without, continuing to season with salt. That's what I wrote. I didn't, it didn't make much sense to me when I wrote it either, but <laughs> sooner or later they're going to get thirsty and come to the well. If you keep on walking in grace to them that are without, letting your speech be seasoned with salt. That don't mean keep your mouth shut. That don't mean Tell them a little something. Follow up. Say, hey, you thought about anything about what I said? About what Christ done in my life? How that, that might affect your life? No, I ain't got time to mess with it. Well, tomorrow, hey, you thought any more about Jesus? Have you, have you prayed? No, they'll keep rejecting. But you keep on being graceful. Hey, how are you today? Let me tell you a little something else about Jesus Christ. You know, He suffered too. He not only died, but He suffered. He suffered for me, and He suffered for you. My sin is what put Him on that cross. My sin. And He died for me, just like He died for you. More than you just salting it away. But this the grace. It's how we come across. It's how we get to people. You know, I was sitting there praying to the Lord. And it's just, you ever had anybody come up to you and tell you about this place? Man, we went over here to so and so and ate the other night. Man, it's so good. Man, it's so good. You ought to try it. And somebody else tells you about this place over here. Same place. Hey. We ate this place the other night. Man, y'all ought to try it. It's so good. It's so good. Time goes on. Six, seven months down the road, somebody else comes to you and tells you, Hey, you tried this place. Sooner or later, you're going to say, You know what? I'm going to go over and get me something to eat. 
I want to go down there and try it out. See if this place is what I'll describe. And if we continue in the gospel, if we continue in our speech, in grace, always seasoned with salt, sooner or later, those that the Lord has called, sooner or later, He ain't called them all. He said many are called, but few are chosen. But sooner or later, they want to go eat. They want to go see what it is that you're raving about. They want to search it out on their own. They want to seek out that matter. Because that's what we do. We get curious. Well, I ain't never heard that. People sit in church all their lives. I ain't never heard that. Well, because a lot of churches are shaking empty salt shakers. Or not turning it upside down. That's right. They're not turning it upside down. They, they've diluted the salt so much that people think that's all we got to do is just say that I believe. It's more than saying I believe. You have to believe. Whosoever believe it, believe it. We got to call on Him and we got to believe in Him. And that's the part that gets folks. Well, I believe in Jesus. I believe in the Bible. But they don't believe in the salvation because their salt's been diluted. In the time of temptation, the Bible says they fall away. They fall away. But if you keep on, if you keep on, sooner or later they're going to get thirsty and come to the well. Jesus said, John 4 and 14, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him, he sh in him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. You never know where your conversations may lead. You never know that person that God has put in front of you who he is. The Bible tells us, be careful to entertain angels unaware. You never know. So we've got to be always, let your speak... Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. Let your speech always, always with grace, season with salt. Season with salt. Mark 9 and 50 says, Salt is good, but if the salt have lost its salt, saltness, wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves, Christ said, and have peace one with another. Have salt with yourselves and have peace one with another. So we have to have salt. We have to have salt. You know, you think about old, old slug. What happens when you pour salt on him? He melts, don't he? Same thing with sin. You expose it, you put salt on it. You know, Elijah, Elijah, when <clears throat> he come back in after Elijah done been to send it up, he come in and they said, everything here is pleasant, but the water is harsh. And Elijah took the salt. And he put the salt in the water. And he blessed it unto the Lord. And the water cleared up. Salt cleanses. Salt purifies. Salt preserves. We're the light of the world. The salt of the earth. We're here to represent Jesus Christ until He comes back to receive us unto Himself. And if we stay on the shelf, and if we don't ever get stirred up, and if we don't start spreading the salt, what's going to happen? It's going to be cast out. You know, in the sacrifices, they'd bring the bullet to the priest. Jesus Christ is our high priest. The priest would take the salt, and he'd put it on the sacrifice. He would sprinkle salt on the sacrifice, and then he would burn the sacrifice. Let's see where the salt, the sacrifice. Jesus Christ made the sacrifice. And we're going to be a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord if we do that in what He's called us to do, to be the salt of the earth. And it's not easy. It's not easy. If it would have been, the Bible would have said it would have been easy. But we've got to be willing. 
willing. Because he'll never leave you nor forsake you. And when knowing that truth and knowing the fact that Christ said, Fear no man, you know, fear not man, but fear him. But what can man do? He can kill the body. But God, Christ said, Fear him that can kill the body and damn the soul to hell. I fear him. I fear him. And that's where it all starts. Is the fear of the Lord. Is the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1 tells us. And we have to fear God. We have to trust God. And we have to do that which He's called us to do. Back in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 says, You are the light of the world. A city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. A city that sits on a hill cannot be hid. So we have to go out. We have to get out into society and be a witness. Let your light shine that the world can see. You know, I was listening to the radio the other day and they had a question. And man, in a Christian radio, and it blows my mind at the things that we ask that we should know. She said, you think if Jesus Christ was here, he would vote? You try going to Russia as an American citizen and vote. They're not going to let you vote, are they? Now, I couldn't say that if you come from Russia over here, you couldn't vote because we got a president that ain't even from here. So, But Christ was not of this world. He was not of this world. But you see, simple little things like that, questions like that, over open air, over open air. You think if Jesus Christ were here, he would vote? No. He wouldn't vote because he's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He spoke all this into existence. He already knows the outcome. He knows the outcome. If it wasn't for Israel desiring a king because God wasn't good enough, they wanted to be like everybody else, we wouldn't be voting either. That's right. But God is our king. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. No, Jesus wouldn't vote. He's the judge. He is a righteous judge. And he's the one that's putting the powers to be in place to fulfill his will. And we got to do the job that he had sent us to do. Do the work of an evangelist. Baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy 4 says, Preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's that song. That's that song. What's that song? Shake it like a salt shaker. <laughs> That's what we ought to be doing. Shaking it like a salt shaker. We ought to be spreading the salt around the world so that they could hear and that people would thirst for the Word of God. Because until you have a thirst for something, you'll never have a desire to go to it. You'll never have a desire to go to it. Everything in, in this life has come so easy for so many of us. We've never had a strong yearning and a desire to seek out something because everything's always been at our fingertips. I probably told y'all this story before about the little boy that, that wanted to, I believe he wanted to be a pilot. And him and his daddy were down at the beach. <clears throat> and all he's talking about, Daddy, I want to learn how to be a pilot. I want to learn how to be a pilot. And his daddy took him out and they went out in the water and said, Come here, son, I'm going to show you something. And he took him and he held his head underwater. So he just about quit moving. And he pulled him up. And he said, why did you do that? He said, what did you want most when you were under that water? He said, I wanted to breathe. He said, when you desire something as much as you desired having a breath of air when you were in that water drowning, then you'll pursue it. And that's the way we are to pursue God. Like the breath that we need to live. The water we need to drink. The bread of life that he's given us right here. We ought to be in it each and every day. Because this is what salts us. And we've got to be salted in order to be the salt of the earth. 
Any question? Amen. I hope that wasn't too long. <laughs> <laughs>